Huawei Technologies CFO Meng Wanzhou is wanted in the U.S. for fraud in relation to her company's activities in Iran. She reached a deal with the U.S. Department of Justice that ended her three-year house arrest in Canada and returned to China. Immediately after, the two Canadian Michaels who had been held hostage in China because of Meng's extradition case were released. Is Meng a free person now? Did China win over the U.S. as it claimed? Who are the winners and losers? Hello everyone, welcome to my show. Meng Wanzhou is the daughter of Huawei's founder, Ren Zhenfei. Her extradition case in Canada soured the relations between China, the United States, and Canada. Let's take a look at who won in this case. The purpose of Meng's extradition by the United States is to prosecute Huawei for violating the U.S. ban in Iran. The U.S. real target is Huawei, not Meng Wanzhou. In the plea deal Meng signed with the U.S. Justice Department, she made an admission to the multiple material misrepresentations regarding Huawei's operations in Iran and has taken responsibility for her principal role in perpetrating a scheme. Meng didn't plead guilty but has admitted to the accusations alleged by U.S. prosecutors. This will help the U.S. government in speeding up the process to formally charge Huawei. So on this note, the United States has achieved its goal. Now another winning point for the U.S. is being able to fulfill its responsibility to its ally and resolve the hostage crisis by bringing the two Canadian Michaels home. Being able to resolve this crisis enhances the United States' leadership in international affairs and its relations with allies. But some people aren't happy with the Justice Department's plea bargain that more or less let Mon off the hook because it sets a bad precedent that allows China to be more aggressive in using hostages to resolve disputes. On this note, the U.S. lost. China's biggest loss is that Meng admitted that the U.S. allegations against her and Huawei were true. Previously, Meng had denied them and demanded a public apology and compensations. When Meng was taken back to China, China's state media declared her return as an important national action and a major victory of the Chinese people. Beijing is very proud that its so-called hostage diplomacy worked. But Beijing's big victory is also where it failed miserably. And this is something the Chinese Communist Party would never understand because its perspective and standard are different from those of the rest of the world. Almost simultaneously as Mon is free to leave Canada, China released the two Canadian Michaels who had been held hostage in retaliation against Canada's arrest of Mon. The entire world has once again seen the CCP's rogue nature in kidnapping people as a way of diplomacy. One China expert said that Beijing might have won tactically but lost strategically. For China and the United States, both have wins and losses. So who is the real winner? Canada is a passive participant in the debacle but has emerged as the real winner. During the three years of intense legal battles, Canada was caught in the escalating tension between Washington and Beijing, but has demonstrated to the world the independence of its judiciary system and the commitment to international extradition treaties. It has not caved to the CCP and was able to peacefully bring its citizens back. Sadly, the biggest loser is Meng Wanzhou. Last Friday afternoon, after the court announced that she was free to leave the country, she left for China in a hurry. You might say, hey, isn't this what she wanted? To be able to return to China and leave the ordeal behind her? No, I think her ordeal has just begun. The Chinese government sent a Boeing 777 charter plan to pick her up and she practically left Canada within an hour after the court ruling. I don't think she even had time to pack. Take a look at this picture when she landed in China. The red dress looks too big on her. 
Meng is known for her expensive and fashionable outfits every time she goes out in public in Vancouver. It's hard to imagine that she picked such an ill-fitted dress for this important occasion. The dress was prepared for her by those who sent the airplane. Some Chinese netizens are angry about their government spending so much money sending an airplane for her. Well, the reason Beijing sent an airplane might not be because they want to be nice to her. One Chinese expert, Chen Po Kong, on his YouTube channel talked about the strange route her plane took. A normal flight from Vancouver to Shenzhen, China would take about 17 hours. Her flight took longer. After taking off from Vancouver, instead of flying westbound, it flew eastbound to Canada's inland and then up north and made a big circle through the Arctic before going west. It seems very strange, isn't it? It's obvious that the plane was trying to avoid U.S. territory. Why is Beijing so nervous? Well, maybe it worries that Washington will change its mind and order the plane to return. Or maybe it worries that Meng Wanzhou doesn't want to go back to China and may do something mid-air. We don't know, but we can figure out that 1. Beijing doesn't feel good if Meng stays in Canada. 2. That Meng Wanzhou is very important to Beijing. And 3. Beijing doesn't want her to talk to anyone now that she is free. That's why even though Meng's husband and children are still in Vancouver, Beijing didn't give her any time, order her to leave immediately, and send an airplane to pick her up. With her background and with what's going on politically in China right now, Meng may never leave China again. If she wants to see her husband and children, they will have to go back to China. In hindsight, her days under house arrest in Vancouver weren't that bad. If you ask her, she might have chosen to stay in Vancouver, but she doesn't have that freedom anymore. Once you're deemed important by the Chinese Communist Party, you are no longer free. When Meng landed in China, the government orchestrated a big welcome for her. As her plane descended in Shenzhen, it was greeted by a special message from the control tower. Here's China's Shenzhen Baoan Airport. The motherland is forever your most powerful support. Welcome back, Miss Meng Wanzhou. I think this message might have freaked her out. She gave a scripted speech at the airport. If Beijing uses her for a good round of nationalistic publicity campaigns, then her days in China will be certainly much worse than her Vancouver days. That's all for today. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.